So I became this person who walked around with like two sides of David Goggins. There was one side that was like, I'm a tough guy. That was the, the outside surface. But on the inside, I was a kid that was just hurting, that needed all kind of help, but no one knew it. Right. I never talked about it because why that show weakness. And my mom didn't need to hear it. At least that's what I thought. So, you know, for, for me to come out and be this vulnerable, because everybody thinks I'm Superman. So I wonder why. Yeah, everybody thinks I'm Superman. So I had to tell them the truth. You know, and for you know, and the truth is very important. And for me, a lot of years of my life growing up, I lied a lot because I didn't have a lot of friends, felt socially just all kind of awkward. I was hiding all kind of stuff. So you do whatever you can to create another human being that's acceptable, that you think is acceptable in society. And when I did that, all that came out was a bunch of shit, a bunch of lies, a bunch of filth, a bunch of nothing. So for me to come out and write a book about the real David Goggins, it was tough. It was tough, but that's the only way. If I want to help people out, the only way I can cut to the surface is say, look guys, gals, whoever's reading this book, I am where I am now. You guys see this. And it would have been very easy to write a book about the hero, David Goggins, but the hero's not me. The hero is the person reading the book. But I had to tell him where I came from to give people hope that, wow, that's where he came from? He came from all these fucked up obstacles and now he's there? I want to give people that kind of hope, so that's why it was tough. Because to give people hope, I had to take myself to the sewer to show people, hey, I, I, you know, I, I come from hell. I come from hell. And a lot of it I created. Not just society. Yeah, society helped me out. But I created a lot of the hell that I had to go through. I made this picture out to be a lot worse than what it was. It was bad, but I made it out to be, you know, insurmountable so yeah we can be our worst enemy why is the truth so important you know what because first of all it does set you free mentally and it gives you a starting point you have to have the truth to have a starting point so when you like if if i'm lying to you about who i am or i'm lying to you about whatever there's no starting point there's a false reality you have to create the real reality so that's what I call my accountability mirror in my book. That's the real reality. Where the fuck am I gonna start from? So for me, I was lying to this, lying about that. So I had no starting point. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. All right, I'm not real smart. I have no courage. I have no self-esteem. I have no nothing, nothing. That's my starting point. Now we can move from there. But if I tell myself I'm strong, I have courage, I'm smart, and all these are lies, you continuously push that starting point backwards. So that starting point is the truth. The no fucking bullshit truth that only you can tell yourself. So it's the starting point. The truth is the starting point. And most people are surrounded by people that don't tell them the truth. No. Because we, it's too painful. It is. Especially nowadays in this society, we like to surround ourselves. It makes us feel so good. Those people who say, it's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. It isn't okay, man. And I, and I get it. Society's changing. And we love to feel wanted and loved. Trust me. That's all important. It right. is. But you have to have the truth from people. Hey, you're not working your butt off hard enough. You're not trying hard enough. We all think we're trying hard. But what are you gauging that off of? Are you gauging off of, like I talked to this one kid the other day, college is kicking my ass. I said, what are you gauging that off of? I go, are you trying? He goes, yeah, I'm trying my ass off. I'm studying hard. I go, what are you gauging trying hard off of? Well, in high school, I didn't have to try at all. And I made great grades. In college, I'm trying hard. You're trying hard compared to what you did in high school which was it came easy to you. So your reality is something that you created off of something easy. So you trying hard is two hours of studying. I'm gonna tell you a difference in trying hard and trying hard. Trying hard is something in your mind just doesn't stop. 
we, we're, we know two hours isn't enough. So it's all about you know reality and what you're basing things off of. And most people quit at 40%. Yes. That's one of your most famous lines. Yes. I was hearing that years ago coming yes. from you. And so when we're saying I'm trying hard, you, when you look in that accountability mirror, you need to look right in your eyes and say, who am I fucking bullshitting, right? Right. Because most likely you're at 40% or less. Right. Much less. Much less. Because even though the 40% rule came up years later, when I was 297 pounds and I was fat as hell trying to be a Navy SEAL, the scariest thing in the world to me, even to this day, was that that could have been the rest of my life. I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. I thought then, 297 pounds, working for Ecolab, spraying for cockroaches, making $1,000 a month. I thought that was me at my 100% potential. Come to find out, a few years later, I wasn't anywhere near that. 106 pounds less, graduate Navy SEAL training, went on to do all these other things. Looking back on that, that was me trying hard. That's why people gotta understand, what is in us, we have no idea until we start trying hard. And I mean really trying hard, where you're obsessed with, hey, this is my new norm. My new norm is that, wow, this isn't always fun. It's not always meant to be fun. And that's when you know you're trying hard.